Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast. I am Bill, the company's expert. I will be your host today, and today on this episode, we're going to be talking about how to handle responses to a LinkedIn networking campaign. Now, this is part of an incredible way to get a job. Uh, This is a way to get a job through networking. I've talked about this many times on my YouTube channels, and uh, I actually have a course called Get Hired. uh, That there, the link is in the description to that course, uh, where I talk about this intensively and give lots of scripts and details of how to go about doing it. Um, LinkedIn is an incredible tool with which to get a job. Uh, Not only get a job. But it's an incredible tool to unlock a pleasant and forthcoming way of getting a job, uh, as opposed to responding to job ads and going to demeaning interviews by apathetic recruiters and uh, having just feelings of rejection. And uh, it's just a brutal, unpleasant process. You can avoid all of that by instead of going through what I call standard channels, applying for jobs. Instead, you use the networking way of getting a job where you bypass the HR hierarchy. Okay. Um, And as I say, I've talked about that extensively. Now, one of the parts of that uh, is sending messages out on LinkedIn to potential hiring managers. And if you've been following my channel or you've taken my course, I uh, advocate that the people, the types of people that you uh, try and connect with on LinkedIn will be executives, people that are high up in organizations, because these people, uh, number one, are the decision makers. They're the ones that have a lot of influence within the organization. And damn it, if they want to hire somebody, they hire them. Okay. That's the advantage of connecting with these people. They are not pawns. They are not powerless. These are the people that are in the driver's seat. And if they like you, good things tend to happen. Okay. Uh, Now, one of the things that uh, you do on LinkedIn is you send out connection requests. Okay. And uh, I've talked about this. But what I haven't talked about is how to handle the various responses that you might get when you send out connection requests, okay? Now, as with most things, some people will respond to you and connect with you, some people won't. And that's fine. That's part of the plan. It's a numbers game. Uh, If you send out a connection request to 100 CEOs, for example, that are CEOs of companies in your hometown, Uh, that are in your industry, that have potential to hire you, okay, if you send out a connection request, a template connection request to 100 of them, a certain percentage will respond and connect with you. Okay, now how many depends on many factors, but principally, uh, what message you sent them, right? So um, that's fine. Now, my success rate in the past with this has been something around 30%. So if you send a connection request to 100 CEOs, you get 30 CEOs connecting with you. Great. You know, and the second step beyond that is once you've connected to 30 CEOs, then you would send another message and request an informational interview or you request something. You could request consideration for a role. Okay. There's many things you can do, but the point is usually it's a two-step process. Step one is to connect. And step two is to deliver your request, okay? And uh, if you've connected to, say, 30 CEOs and you've sent out 30 template requests to those uh, 30 CEOs, once again, it's a numbers game. And in my experience, uh, it was something like a 20% response rate. So if I wanted uh, an interview, a face-to-face meeting uh, with, with all of these people, uh, I would get a 20% response rate. So I don't know what 20% of 30 is off the top of my head, but uh, what would that be? Six, something like that. Um, and you'd have six meetings lined up. So that would be the idea. Okay. Now, let's start at the beginning here. You send out a connection request. Okay. Uh, you find and you discover the companies or the organizations that are in your industry, in your hometown. Uh, using Google Maps, 
by searching for the different industries and then you get the names of the businesses, you see where the businesses are in relation to you, you see what their name is. You can even go to their website if you wish, but you then go on LinkedIn, you search for that company. Okay, and then you do a people search and then you can see the individuals within the company. Usually the CEO is somebody that uh, pops up. If it's, if it's a smaller company, you'll see maybe the owner, right? And then the first thing to do would be to send them a connection request, okay? I would like to be your friend. I would like to be your connection. Do you accept? That kind of thing, right? Um, now, probably the most uh, common response will be no response to that, okay? Um, in which case, it's pretty simple what to do. You just don't do anything. Um, do you follow up? No. No. Um, but let's talk about the people that do respond. Most people will simply accept the connection request, okay? Um, however, you know, a lot of people may not. <laughs> they may request further information. They may request clarification, who you are exactly. For a connection request, what I would say is all of those you ignore, okay? It's not worth following up. If somebody has a problem with connecting to you, um, then usually no good comes of persisting with it because either they're paranoid or, uh, you know, they just have some kind of personal criteria for how they associate with people and connect with them. And obviously, uh, this is not something that they're uh, doing. Um, there's other explanations for that too. Okay. But that's the bottom line. If there's any issue with accepting a connection request to essentially be your friend on LinkedIn, um, then you don't respond in my, that would be my recommendation. It's not worth your time. Okay. There's plenty more fish in the sea in the vast majority of cases and you just move on. Okay. Um, I mean, I've encountered all kinds. I've encountered people that, uh, get on LinkedIn, but get offended when you try and connect with them. You know, it's like, to me, that doesn't make sense. It's like, okay, well, LinkedIn, like all social networking is a tool to connect with people. Why would you get on there and then have an issue with connecting with people, you know? Uh, but it takes all kinds, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of different types of people out there with all kinds of different worldviews and you have to allow for that. Okay. That's fine. What we're doing here is we're sending out broad connections. We're sort of sending our message out into the world and we're going to get echoes back from the people that think like us. And it's those opportunities that we're going to pursue. Because if you pursue those, you tend to end up with winners. And then there's some great prize at the end of it, like a job or contract work or even something lesser, like a um, point of contact within an industry and a letter of recommendation, blah, blah, blah. There's other things there, okay? Um, now, like I said at the beginning, your request could be either for a connection or you could go a step further. Now, the most common thing to do when you go further is to request an informational interview, okay? Let's grab a coffee, right? Um, there's ways of doing this. You know, I've done, I can't even remember how many informational interviews, but it's been hundreds uh, with CEOs in my hometown. Uh, CEOs and business owners. And uh, you just grab a coffee with one of these people. And these are all people that I don't know, by the way. Uh, it's not like I had any kind of prior relationship or awareness of them. So, uh, I mean, this does work if you do it right. Um, now, one thing I want to say is that this whole concept, it works best in your hometown or your region, okay? Uh, you know, the place where most of your existing network is, okay? Um, if you're trying to connect to people that are in a different city, for example, um, or on the other side of the country or in a different country, um, chances are it's not going to be that successful. There are ways to make it work, but the bigger your network is, the easier this gets. Okay. That's just the reality of it. Okay. Um, now the thing is, I just want to say you can't always go by people's titles also. Um, you know, a lot of people sort of claim that they're, ex they're an executive, but yet they are not an executive. Um, you know, executives usually understand networking, <laughs> okay? That's just a knockoff effect of working at that level, 
Okay. If you are a true executive manager, by nature of that job, you need to understand networking. You're going to be dealing with partners. You're going to be dealing with the public. You're going to be dealing with the media. You're going to be dealing with suppliers. You're going to be dealing with customers. You're going to be dealing with regulators. You're going to be dealing with many, many entities outside of your organization as part of your nine to five job. You are also going to be taking unsolicited requests from people that you don't know who they are. They could be a journalist. They could be a member of the public. They could be uh, somebody that's uh, in charge of an association of some kind uh, or that has influence in other areas. And it is to the organization's best interest that you respond to them and work with them. If they're requesting an interview or they're requesting some information, um, you are doing your company a disservice if you refuse to, you know, reply to them or acknowledge their request or respond in a hostile way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so understanding how to network and understanding how networking works and having uh, above average communication skills is part and parcel of being an executive manager. Okay, so there, my point is that there are some people on LinkedIn who, uh, according to their title, they are an executive manager, but yet they don't understand networking and thus sort of, sort of giving away that they're not really in an executive role for whatever organization they represent. Okay, so there's always that. And you're going to weed those people out, okay? They're going to resp- they're going to either not respond at all or they're going to respond in a sort of strange way, in which case you basically ignore it, okay? Now, let's get to the responses, okay? Let's say that you sent out connection requests um, and several people connected with you and uh, anyone who says something other than just simply accepting your connection request, uh, you, you don't pursue, okay? You don't waste time on them. It's like, you know, you don't want to reconnect with me. That's perfectly fine. You, you're 100% free to do that. Um, I'm going to look elsewhere because of that. Now, of the people that connect to you, you have sent them some kind of a request. As I said, usually it's for an informational interview, basically saying, look, you know, I'm, uh, you know, really interested in your industry. I'd love to be able to get your expert opinion about, you know, maybe your industry or the, or the future of the industry. Would you be able to grab a coffee with me? Would that work? You know, you name the place and time of your convenience and I'll be there, you know, um, maybe just 30 minutes if that works for you. And a lot of executives will, accept that it's a very reasonable harmless request and because they don't really know who you are um you know it might be foolish to turn you down flat uh you know some people do some people don't really communicate over linkedin it's not really their main line and there's other reasons that people may have but a lot of reasonable executives do respond to these requests if especially if you phrase it in a professional way um And, you know, there are other ways of requesting this. For example, if you're a student, you're saying, hello, I have an aspiration to work in your industry someday. I'm currently a student training to learn this stuff. And I'd very much like to ask you some questions about the industry in general. And, you know, if you could spare me, uh, say, 30 minutes of your valuable time, uh, you know, to maybe grab a coffee, uh, I would I would really value that. You know, thank you very much. Um, have a nice day, something like that, you know, like whatever the request is, okay, whatever you're asking for, in this case, you're asking for information. You're not asking for a job, you're asking for information, okay? If you ask for a job, it's not going to work, okay? Um, You know, usually the way these things work is that, you know, if you ask for information, and really what you are looking for is information, Okay, would, you know, is there a place for someone like me with my skills, with my ambitions in this industry? That's really what you're wanting to know, right? So you are looking for information. Okay, and you send those requests out. Now you can get a variety of responses. Let's go through these. The first response someone can do is they ignore the request. Even though you're connected, they don't respond to your information request. And that's fine. You don't have to follow up. You don't have to do anything. That's, in my opinion, the best response. Okay, number two. They can say, for example, we don't have any connections in common. If you connected to them, 
Uh, this, this is more for a connection request. If you connected to them saying, you know, I'd very much like to connect with you. I see that we have connections in common, uh, which is a common thing that I've used to connect to people, uh, which is true. But they respond saying, we don't have any connections in common. Then you're doing it wrong. I just want to go on record and say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've gotten that question from several people that have done this. Um, you have to have connections in common for you to be able to say we have connections in common. <laughs> okay. So just so that's clear. Okay. But let's get back to this. A third response that you can get from your information request, like an informational interview, is they might say, who are you? Why do you want to talk? I need more information on you. You know, they're suspicious of you in some way, or they're, they're giving indications that they might be paranoid. Okay, this is what I would say. They're uh, all, that kind of response is a red flag, okay? Because that signals that either they're paranoid because they've got something to hide, and this does happen. You do get executives that are hated by the public or their organization has a certain amount of animosity towards them, either from former employees or dissatisfied customers or other people. And so they have learned to become wary of communicating with the public. That is a bad sign. That is a sign of potentially a very bad company. Okay. It could also be a sign that this employee, this, this person with whom you're communicating is not actually an executive, okay? Because if you were to send this kind of request to a low-level worker, they wouldn't know what to do with it. Uh, if you were to send this type of request to a mid-level worker, like a mid middle manager or something, they are usually too busy to deal with it. And besides, those people usually aren't facing the public anyway. That's not part of their job, okay? Uh, these types of requests, they only work on executives and anybody can talk to an executive if you do it the right way, but it has to be to an executive because executives, as I said, their uh, part of their job involves facing the public, taking requests and messages from people you don't know outside the company. Okay. It's their job to handle those because they, as part of their job, they represent their organization including to the public. Okay. So this, this type of response where they kind of come back at you with like, who are you? You know, why do you want to talk to me? What questions are you going to ask me? You know, what would you want? Uh, that can be a sign that this person is not actually an executive. They don't understand, uh, this type of networking and that's fine, but it's not worth pursuing. Okay. Don't try and, you know, uh, how can I put it? Don't sort of go down that rabbit hole with this person by trying to satisfy all their questions. They clearly don't get it. And that's fine. That's fine, but you don't have to persist with it. In fact, I recommend you don't. I don't think any good will come of uh, persisting with when you get this kind of response. Okay. Another response that you can get, okay, is somebody say, like, if you request an informational interview, like, which is a face-to-face -face meeting, and they say, well, could we substitute a phone call or an email conversation? Okay. I would say, uh, no, that won't really do any good. The, the, the real benefit from doing this is actually having face time with somebody getting in front of them. You develop a much stronger connection, a much stronger bond with a person when you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them in person than any kind of impersonal voice at the end of a telephone. Okay. Besides and I'm speaking from experience here, you can have a one hour, you can have a two hour conversation with people in person. It's much more rare to have a two hour phone call with somebody. Usually phone calls are like 10 minutes, you know, a little bit more, right? That's not enough time to really get past the small talk, <laughs> you know, the icebreaker and get into any substance. Okay. So bottom line if they want to substitute a phone call or an email or a text, you know, conversation, the answer is no. Uh, you don't have to say no. You just, you know, you could say no, thank you, you know, or you could just not respond if, if that's your thing. Um, but, you know, it might be, might be courteous to say, uh, you know, thanks anyway. That, that's not a problem. Okay. Um, 
I suppose it is technically possible if you, if you had a quick, simple, specific question like, uh, you know, do you know anyone in this company or industry that I could use as a contact? You know, if you want to ask a question like that, I suppose you could do you could schedule a phone call or something if that's what they're wanting. OK, but I don't know. That's kind of pushing it. In most cases, I would just say to to drop it. <clears throat> OK, now um, <clears throat> other responses. If you request an informational interview, you say, uh, you know, I'd very much like to meet with you. Uh, you suggest that the, you know, the time and place, you know, of your convenience. Okay. Now, a lot of people who understand networking, a lot of executives, a lot of, uh, people that are used to meeting with the public, they're public facing, uh, you know, including a lot of sort of, uh, people that work in marketing, people that work in sales, they understand what I'm talking about. People that work in public relations specifically they know what i'm talking about okay uh what they will do a standard thing everybody kind of knows is you pick a sort of um a neutral third party location you know usually the best locations are like things like starbucks you know like a coffee coffee place um where you can have a quick coffee and a conversation and you know you, you some people do restaurants. I would not recommend that. People don't want to have lunch with someone they don't know, but uh, they will have a coffee. They will meet someone and have a coffee. You know, it's not really much of a commitment. So what most people will do is if they respond, they'll say, yes, you know, we could go here. We could go there. Right. How about this place at this day on this time? Right. Now, alternatively, someone can respond and say, yes, you can come to my office at this day and time. Now, meeting at the person's office, I'm just going to say this. This may not apply in all cases, but this is my bias based on my experience. People that want to meet in their office, it signals a lack of commitment or a lack of understanding of networking on their part. Okay? Uh, you know, if they're not willing to even leave their office, they're not really invested in this. They're not, they're not um, taking it seriously. Okay? If they're willing to leave their uh, office and go to a nearby coffee shop, they're doing some work on your behalf. That is signaling that they are taking this seriously. Okay. Um, so the correct response would be like, let's meet in this third party place. You know, a lot of people who do this stuff, they, they get this. A lot of people who don't get this, it's not going to work out anyway. And so if you get that response, you know, would you like to meet at my office? How about you meet, come and meet me at my office at this date and time? Um, no, that's, that feels like a, a student going to talk to their professor at school during office hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it feels like you're going to wait in the doctor's office <laughs> for the doctor. The doctor has the authority, has the power, is the one that controls the meeting, and you're just a subordinate. And that's not the way these things work. Okay? You meet, you meet as two professionals who would like to discuss something and maybe come to an arrangement, possibly, or they're just going to make a professional connection, right? Master and master, not master and slave. Okay, so if it were me, and this has been me many, many times, if somebody says, meet me at my office, I say no. <laughs> or I just say, thanks anyway, uh, I, might, I, I can't make that. Okay? Um... Alternatively, another response could be, yes, they say, yes, definitely. Let's get together. Let's meet. But they don't suggest a specific place or time. Okay. Well, in this case, you do respond. Okay. And my recommendation would be to respond by offering three locations. Okay. So you suggest, how about this place, this place, or this place? at three possible times, or you could just suggest one location that's near, uh, this executive near their office, which you would know where it is. Okay. So how about here and give them a choice between three possible times. Okay. Date and times, maybe three different days and three different times of day. So you've got three options to choose from. And that usually works. It takes the work out of them having to schedule it and think about it. You just say, would you like me to meet me here at possibly this time? And it's very easy for them to agree to and uh, consequently to actually have the meeting. So uh, that would be the response to that. Okay. 
And of course, the standard response that you're going to get from a lot of people is just to say, yes, definitely, let's get together. How about this place at this date and time? You know, does that work for you? Okay, that's going to be a standard response, in which case you say yes <laughs> and you make the appointment. And uh, that's how you connect with these people. And you have an informational interview. You are going to have an informational interview with an executive that's a decision maker in your industry, in your hometown. And if you have a very pleasant conversation, uh, they will like you. Uh, people like people who are genuinely interested in what their opinions are and, uh, you know, that are friendly and pleasant and genuinely are enthusiastic. And uh, this does work. You know, there, we go through life and very rarely does somebody say, you know what, I'm really interested in what you think of this. And it's something that you love to talk about, like your business, you know, what you do all day. Very rarely do we get this. When people get that, they tend to like the person that's interested, okay? And uh, it paves the way for if you want to pursue a job opportunity in that company, it paves the way for a possible third step where you maybe go away for a week or two and you come back and you say, send a message, message and you say, you know what? I've been thinking about what you were saying when we met two weeks ago. And, you know, I'd really like to be a part of that. If anything ever comes up in your organization where you need someone to do this, let me know because I'm really interested. You know, and that's how you get a job. That's one way of how you get a job through networking. It's a method that I highly advocate for. It's pleasant. It tends to open up all kinds of doors. It tends to result in, when it, when it does result in a job, it tends to be a good job in a place where people uh, click with you and you have friends in high places and you've already had a glimpse into that organization before you, were, before you decided to put yourself forward. So uh, great things happen from that. So hopefully that was helpful uh, for all the people that are pursuing getting a job through networking, uh, specifically using LinkedIn to do so. I hope this was informative. If you've taken my course, hopefully this uh, adds, it fills in a little more detail to um, that component of my Get Hired course. And um, if this is all new to you, uh, I highly encourage you to uh, investigate this. Don't take my word for any of this stuff. Do your own research. Go on Google. Go wherever you need to and, and look up how the majority of people end up getting hired. What method do they use? You will find that networking is number one. And uh, this is one way of doing it. So thank you very much for your attention. You guys are awesome. And I hope you will come back and listen to more episodes of the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast. Take care.